For today's video, I'm making an end grain wood ring. Uh, this one is paduk, and this one is maple and walnut, a design I did. Um, but this is the one I made it for the uh, video today, so we'll concentrate on that one. The first step of the project was to slice up some strips of paduk on the table saw and then glue them up into an ingrain pattern, kind of like a small cutting board. I'll go over the dimensions of this ingrained strip in the V-Carve setup. This is how I set the design up in V-Carve Pro. You can see each one of the lines here. That's all that really matters. The ovals here are just what it's going to look like. They aren't actually used for the tool pads or anything like that. This is set for 0.65 thick. And it's 5 inches high and 8.5 and wide. Which and the distance between these is just trial and error. I can't tell you any secret formula, but each line is 0.8131 apart from each other. So if we go over to the tool paths, uh, first of all, that's how I did the to skim it. Because my original piece was thicker than 0.65. I skimmed it down to get exactly 0.65 thick. And all I did on that one is have a, a was it one ten thousandth of an inch thick. And to get it right, I measured from the base, raised up to 0.65 height, reset zero, and then ran that tool path. And for the 60 degree slots, I went 0.67, so it's going to cut through by two thousandths. It's a V60, 60 inch, and it's a wide V bit, made it a little easier. And I did not have it as a ramp, but I should have. That would have helped a little bit because when it drops straight down, it would hit pretty hard. So I'll change that right now, even though I don't need this for a while. And if I run this preview, that's what it's going to look like. So you can see one, two, three, four, five, six of these wedges that will get glued up together. Um, it's the exact same shape you'll see later in the video. So that's all there is for this part of it. I will first measure from the base and then raise up 0.65 inches and reset to zero then, and then I know it's exactly 0.65 thick when I skim the top off. Now raise up to 0.65. And reset to zero again. Normally I use a dust collector, but since we're doing a video, we're going to have a lot of dust in here this morning. Change bits and go to the next step. Re-zero again. Okay, cutting these V60 slots, this is hardwood, which obviously is hard, and it's end grain, which makes it that much worse. So I'm doing very slim passes on this to get less deflection, to get it nice and perfect. So, yeah, it adds a fix for a few minutes, but it's not that big a project anyway, so it's well worth it. Now we will slice off the edges to, so we can make the pinwheels from this. So the basic concept for this is we'll put everything on the painter's tape. Right how we want it to be. Of course I got a little fuzzy stick in there, so let's give it a hand.
And that's the basic shape we're going for. Okay, so now we have our pinwheel, we will call it. Let that dry up, and tomorrow we'll do the next cut. And this is V-Carve, where I set up cutting out the actual rings. So this one is uh, 0.9 inches wide. It fits my finger. I measured it ahead of time, measured an actually existing ring. And I want this to be exactly an eighth inch uh, thick. So, of course, this will be a quarter inch wider, because it's eighth inch here, eighth inch here. So that ends up to be 1.15, which is 0.25 more. That's the whole design set up there. Real tough, huh? And then for the tool paths, I use a 45 degree bit for a chamfer on both the inside and outside. Uh, the inside one is 0.75 depth, so not real, not very deep. And you can see the settings if you want to see it. I did do a, a ramp on this one to make it right. And pretty similar on this one, the outside cut. 0.125, eighth inch deep on that one. Everything else is the same settings. And then Cutting it out, I always mark 1.25 end mill and how deep the wood is for something like this. I'm going to measure from the base and lift up a half inch or reset to zero that way. So we'll go from there and you know, the outside, they're both the same. 0.51 deep. So if I'm a half inch thick piece of wood, it'll be go through one hundredth of an inch through. No tabs. We'll see later how we get around that. And I did do a ramp again. And almost identical for the inside one. 0.51 deep, last pass, angle. So that's all there is to the V-carve. Not very tough. So here is the plug or pie or wedge, whatever we're going to call this thing that will eventually be the ring. How we're going to do this is I will drill a hole in my spoil board here that will be exactly 0, 0. I will screw this down at that point so we know it's perfectly centered. I will get a 45 degree V-bit and do a circle on the inside of the ring and the outside of the ring. So I'll have two circles of the V-bit for the chamfered edge. Flip it over, do the exact same thing. So I'll have both sides, the V-bit, chamfered edge. Then I'll get a bit and I'll cut around the outside. So that will be the outside of the ring cut out. We still have the inside left to do. For that point, I will get this little high-tech jig I have. I will screw it down on the outside of that and remove the screw that we had holding down the middle of the ring and this will hold it in place and I can cut the inside circle out while that holds the rest of the ring in place and at that point we should have a ring. It'll still take some sanding but that's okay. So first step, mark our zero zero point. know that is zero zero so I will screw this down nice and tight uh, zero at the top of that
to flip it over and do the other side. When I wrote the G-Code program for this, I set this to be exactly a half inch tall. I know as I do more rings, they won't all be exactly a half inch. So I'm going to measure to the base, raise it up a half inch, and set zero at that point. And now I'll raise it up exactly a half inch. Set that to my zero point on the machine. Here we go. Okay, now I'll put my high tech jig in place and we'll cut the inside out. So now that's in place. We'll take out the center screw because I don't want to like, take a chance of hitting that. I don't think we will, but why chance it? So when it cuts this out, it'll do a center pass, and then I set it to an extra, the final pass, take an extra a hundredth of an inch, I believe, so you get a nice smooth inside finish. There's no tabs on this, so when it's this piece is loose, it'll pop out. So I will stop the machine at that point, take that piece out, then rerun the program to get that final pass. So it gets right interior diameter that I want. Let's see what we got. Okay, so this was just off the, the uh, machine. I've done zero sanding to it. So it still needs some sanding. Obviously, you can see some edges on there. But I have to call this a success.